I have this thing for abusive men. I know it's not healthy. My $65 an hour therapist with a $12 haircut from Fantastic Sam said it wasn't. Thank God I couldn't afford a second session. He would have been so worried if I told him I'd been stalking on Facebook this mean bully from third grade, Tommy. One time he caught me looking at him and I smiled. I couldn't help it. I thought Tommy was the coolest kid in the entire world. You cannot reply with violence when someone smiles at you, can you? Well, he did. He and his friends chased me through the schoolyard and then threw me head first into a garbage bin. Yes, at one point or another, I may have fantasized about getting invited to his fabulous plantation house for a sleepover. I even considered what subjects of conversation would be appropriate to have with his mother. But at that one time, it was but a friendly smile. Not insinuating at all. I didn't mean to make him uncomfortable. Why did you do it? The principal, Miss Siebold, asked him. Because he's so faggy, Tommy responded. I know he's faggy, but that's no excuse. Oh, Miss Siebold. Now I can laugh at your improper use of offensive words, but back then you made me feel so wrong, so guilty, and inadequate by referring to me with a trigger word. It hurt my nine-year-old ego just as much as being thrown head first into the garbage. Maybe more. You don't tell a nine-year-old boy that he's vaggy. You tell him that he enunciates well and keep quiet about the peculiarities of his demeanor. Tommy got suspended three days. And Miss Seabold had a talk with my parents. She recommended early conversion therapy to repress my effeminate mannerisms and avoid potential deviations. My father thought it would be enough if I joined the Boy Scouts. I thought it would be a wonderful idea. I love the cap, the shorts, and the badges. When I learned that a Cub Scout uniform included a sewing kit, I almost fainted. We're going to do embroidery like the sisters in Little Women, I asked my mother. Mother started crying. She pulled me to her bosom and, between sobs, called me her sweetheart. That's what turned me gay, I suppose. That soft woman was a terrible influence. Later, I found out that the regular sewing kit the one that most Cub Scouts carried had thread in only four colors. Black, gray, military green, and white. Imagine trying to embroider a strawberry shortcake or a My Little Pony with only those four colors. You cannot do embroidery with just that. Any embroidery. You need blue. You need pink. You need purple. The sewing kit was but an emergency kit meant for mending ribs and sewing buttons. The meetings weren't that fabulous either. Au contraire, they were utterly disappointing. I got beaten, bashed, and insulted every time. I got knocked unconscious playing tag. Now, the pack leader, Akila, he was this 20-something black Irish guy with a permanent stubble whom I found rather intriguing. I couldn't keep my eyes off that tuft of hair coming up his chest. I thought that Tommy had finally killed me and sent me to faggy heaven. Akila liked me, or at least he felt sorry for me. I, I couldn't tell. He made it bearable to be a Cub Scout. Are you okay, buddy? He used to say, extending a hand to help me stand up after one of the boys had tripped me. I'm fine, I replied, cleaning the blood off my nose, pulling down my shirt, and offering him a smile that now I realize must have made me look as crazy as Vivian Lee playing Blanche Dupois in a streetcar named Desire. A year ago or so, Tommy came up on my Facebook feed as a suggested friend. Needless to say, I didn't dare send him a friend request. I just started looking at his profile once every few hours. He went to Brown University. He's married and he has two little girls, now in their teens. 
His forehead grew bigger, but he's still a hunk. Seeing him smiling in every picture reminded me of that one time he caught me, dropped me to the floor, and while his friends held my legs and arms, he sat on my chest and forced me to open my mouth with his manly fingers. Is he going to kiss me? I thought, close my eyes. When I opened them again, I saw a thick, yellowish phlegm coming down. Life's so weird. One can exchange all sorts of bodily fluids. Oh, the number of times I've eaten ass. But that one time in which Tommy made me eat his saliva, I cried in my bed for an entire month. Oh, I'm sure that when he remembers it, he must feel guilty. He and his friends must giggle, a little embarrassed, when they meet for a beer and losers like me come up in their conversation. We were so bad to that poor bastard, they must say, referring specifically to me, then finish their drinks and get into their Lexi or BMWs or whatever expensive vehicle they drive now and go home to their wives, watch TV on their 60-inch flat screens and hope that their kids don't come out as bad as they did. I know they feel guilty because one of Tommy's friends apologized once, via Twitter, so all my 122 followers could learn what a poor loser I used to be in elementary school, and his 928,326 followers could see what a big man he had become. He received a lot of praise. I was included in every reply. I tweeted something like, Thank you, it means a lot to me, hashtag it gets better. Way to go, Joe, one of his followers replied. So proud of you, Joe, another one did. You're a big man with a big heart and deserve the best, another one did. 